on the whole, uh, the number of kidnaps, kidnappings has dropped, and uh, generally I think the security situation is improving as well. President Muhammad Buhari tasks security chiefs on the prevailing apprehension in the country. Whether they are kidnappers and arm robbers, and for that reason, you don't go to them with kid gloves. You go to them well prepared. Acting Inspector General of Police meets with officers of Special Anti-Robbery and Anti-Kidnapping Squad, assures the public of readiness to mitigate criminal activities. I'm happy that today the minority judgment of the trial tribunal has become the majority judgment of the Court of Appeal. Appeal Court sitting in Abuja affirms Buiga Uyitola as duly elected governor of Oshun State. And National Early Warning and Response Mechanism Center pips into 2019 flood and rainfall outlook, sets to organize, to strategize against flood disasters. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on NT Network News. I'm Cyril Stover in Abuja. Also tonight, Pingino John Adams is in Lagos and uh, Naomi Aboku is in Maiduguri. President Muhammad Buhari has renewed his marching order to Nigeria's law enforcement agencies to, as a matter of urgency, restore public confidence in governance, describing the prevailing state of fear, uncertainty and apprehension in the nation's security situation as disturbing and intolerable. This was at a strategic meeting with service chiefs and heads of other security agencies in his office. State House correspondent Adam Osambo has details. This crucial meeting in response to the prevailing challenges of security in parts of the country is the second to be summoned by President Muhammad Buhari in 48 hours. In attendance were the Minister of Defense, the National Security Advisor, Service Chiefs led by the Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Defense Intelligence, Acting Inspector General of Police, as well as Director General of the Department of State Services and the National Intelligence Agency. About three hours behind closed doors of their various initiatives and interventions to either nip in the bud potential threats to security or confront the various criminal elements now threatening the peace and stability of the country. Uh, we recall that um, after the last meeting, various operations were set up, um, both other being one of uh, such um, strategies. They had been kidnapped, but um, on the continuous public outcry about the security situation in the country, security agencies most confidence in government. Directives that. Um, Nigerian wake up uh, feeling healthy and confident that um, uh, their security is uh, guaranteed. Any update on the kidnapped district head of Dora in Kasina State? Of course, uh, serious efforts are being made. Uh, key suspects have been arrested, and it is hoped that uh, in a short while, uh, those behind uh, that heinous crime will be brought to book. During the meeting, issues relating to the proliferation of small arms and light weapons, as well as its consequences on national security, were thoroughly analyzed and far-reaching measures adopted in the interests of the country. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And with the dynamism of global insecurity, in which Nigeria is also a partaker, the Niger Police Force says it is deploying modern technologies as well as working with members of the public to mitigate any criminal activity in the country. The Acting Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, stated this during a meeting with officers in charge of the Special Anti-Robbery and Anti-Kidnapping Squad at the Force Headquarters in Abuja. We'll bring you details of that report in the course of the news. And still on security efforts towards sustainable peace and security in Nigeria and the West African sub-region, it will remain a mirage if youths are still perceived as perpetrators of violence, insurgency, and other security issues. This was the submission of speakers at a continental study for youths in Abuja. Adebola Brooks Lynn Sunday reports. 
Young people within the age brackets of 18 and 35 are often the main tool for the perpetration of criminal and political violence, communal clashes, and many other security issues, a development that presents youths largely in a bad light. These youths, drawn mainly from the West African subregion, converged on Abuja to exchange knowledge towards ensuring that their contributions are not forgotten or go unrecognized without due accords to the positive role they play in national, regional and continental peace and security efforts. Now is to prevent and to manage conflicts and security threats in West Africa. Minister of Youth and Sports Development Solomon Dalung and his foreign affairs counterparts Geoffrey Oyama in their messages wants youths as leaders of tomorrow to protect their future. Particularly those with us today must be engaged and involved in the broader social change processes to transform violence into peace. The survival of any given race depends on the nature, quality, and the reliability of its present youth. When they are idle, they actually get involved in all sorts of conflicts. Youths need to know their rights and responsibilities. You know, this way, they will not be exploited by, uh, by politicians, and through this, we will be able to maintain peace. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday. NTA News. Nigeria and Angola have agreed to increase cooperation in areas of trade, investment, security, and economic diversification. This followed the meeting between Niger's Foreign Affairs Minister Jeffrey Oyama and his Angolan counterpart Manuel Augusto in Abuja. Foreign Desk Correspondent Makut Simon Macham reports. 30 years ago, the path of Jeffrey Oyama and Dominus Augusto cross while they were young diplomats representing their countries abroad. Today they are meeting in Abuja as foreign ministers representing their countries at the highest level of diplomacy. The center of their conversation is all about improving relations between Nigeria and Angola, two African oil giants who are facing similar economic challenges. After a closed door meeting, the two ministers emerged to sign a memorandum of understanding that talks about convening the Nigeria-Angola Joint Commission to consolidate on areas of mutual interest. This uh, is a reflection of the uh, visit here of the close cooperation between our two countries, two countries that have a lot in common, uh, big oil producing countries uh, and uh, rich in other uh, mineral resources. Um, and great potential, but um, uh, at the moment, of course, facing uh, economic challenges and uh, the need for economic diversification. So we must give content to this uh, um, instrument of, uh, of uh, strengthening our, uh, our bilateral uh, relations. They also resolved to follow up on the bilateral air service agreement signed recently between the two countries. In Abuja, Makut Simon Macham, NTA News. And back to security issues, the acting inspector general of police, Mohamed Adamu, has been speaking of the deployment of modern technologies to mitigate any criminal activity in the country. He spoke of this at a meeting with officers in charge of the Special Anti-Robbery and Anti-Kidnapping Squad at the force headquarters in Abuja. Whether they are kidnappers and arm robbers. And for that reason, you don't go to them with kid gloves. You go to them well prepared. In order to complement your efforts, you shall soon fully resuscitate reorganize and expand the operation of safer highway patrol scheme. This is with intent to enhance visibility policing within the public space and particularly at vulnerable areas across Acting Inspector General of Police. In other news, the Federal Executive Council has approved a robust plan of action towards putting an end to open defecation in the country by the year 2025. Consequently, an ambitious Clean Nigeria campaign is soon to be launched by President Buhari, who has also agreed to serve alongside other members of the Council as first-level ambassadors towards leadership and commitment for its successful implementation. Water Resources Minister Suleiman Adamu announced this while briefing newsmen 
after the council's meeting. State House correspondent Adam Sambu reports. As the Federal Executive Council winds down its activities under the Buhari administration's first tenure of office, it is indeed a race against time. This informed a nearly 10-hour-long meeting which considered more than 20 memoranda from ministries, departments and agencies, amongst them is the one seeking to end open defecation in the country. India plans to declare itself open defecation free by 2nd October this year, 2019. And once that happens, Nigeria is the number one country in the world that practices open defecation. You all agree with me that this is uh, an honor we do not want to, to, to have. Although Nigeria recently declared a state of emergency on water and sanitation sector, so far only 10 out of the 774 local governments are open defecation free. Describing this as unacceptable, the council approved a number of measures including the proposed launch of what it calls Clean Nigeria Use the Toilet Campaign. We also hope to create a Clean Nigeria movement and uh, to harmonize ministerial activities so that uh, we have a seamless policies regarding sanitation in the country. We also requested for an annual budget of about $10.6 to be approved. Finance Minister Zainab Ahmed, on her part, secured the Council's approval of 970.2 million naira for the acquisition of residential accommodation for staff of the Nigeria Customs Service, as well as another 247.9 million naira for modern communication gadgets towards enhancing end-to-end -end inscription of message delivery by the service devoid of any tapping by smugglers and their cohorts. The need has become necessary because of the renewed onslaught by the Nigerian Customs Service on smuggling as well as on other economic activities. Also approved is 710 million naira for an automated project lighthouse aimed at aggregating, centralizing and analyzing nationwide taxpayer data information. The system will, will enable us to see a 360 degree view of the tax situation of any taxpayer. At the end of the day, what this will do is it will help us to improve on our revenue, tax revenue collection efforts both at the federal as well as in the, at the state level. In the area of infrastructure, the council approved a 1.8 billion naira secondary road contract linking Dangara to Yaba in Kuali area council of the FCT as well as another project for the supply of heavy duty equipment for the Department of Development Control. And these equipments are used by Development Control to affect needed adjustments to buildings and structures that have contravened uh, set regulations, particularly the Abuja Master Plan. For the Minister of Petroleum Resources, we had two interventions today. The first was um, on behalf of NNPC, and that was for the award of a contract to provide a pipeline to supply gas to East and West Corridor and be able to link onto the OB, OB3 uh, contract has already been awarded. The significance of that obviously is that the more we can gather gas that is essential uh, to feed stock the pipelines that we're building, the easier it will be for us to create that hub that we're looking for to move gas around the corridors of Nigeria, north, south, east, west, as the case may be. The Federal Executive Council has also granted approval for the purchase of water tankers and tenders for the FCT fire service, as well as a fire service truck for the just completed 17-story headquarters building of the Nigerian Content Monitoring Board in Bayelsa State. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Nigeria has joined global action for renewed increased coordination to combat all forms of forced labor through Alliance 8.7. This global agenda launched in Abuja by the Tripartite Partners at a national consultative workshop is for all enterprises to obey national laws for the attainment of zero tolerance to factors leading to forced labor. Emmanuel Ayimiro reports. Alliance 8.7 is an aspect of the 2030 Sustainable Development Goal 8, which seeks global partnership committed to immediate and effective measures for the eradication of forced labor, human trafficking, modern slavery and child labor by the year 2025. 
no time is to be wasted for the attainment of the goal, particularly when about 40 million people globally are victims of modern slavery and some 152 million children in child labor, half of them in the worst forms of hazardous work. Accelerated action is therefore seen as the only way out. At the heart of ILO's various intervention and decent work agenda in Nigeria, the ILO believes that productive employment and decent work are key elements of achieving a fair globalization and poverty reduction. We have to join forces to achieve the sustainable development goals. We look to continue to partner and accelerate progress in West Africa and Nigeria. In his message to the workshop, Vice President Professor Yemi of Simbajo recalls that Nigeria has in 1999 and 2003 ratified and domesticated Convention 138, setting age limit for work and decriminalization of all forms of human trafficking. The all these measures are practical demonstration of the federal government of Nigeria's commitment towards the elimination of child labor in the country. The national consultation of Alliance 8.7 is expected to lay the foundation for a viable national alliance against the phenomenon of child labor and human trafficking. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. And it's time to take our first break tonight. We'll be back shortly with more stories on the news. Stay with us. The Progressive Governors Forum hereby invites all present and past APC governors, or APC governors elect, APC National Working Committee members, or former APC National Chairman, APC State Chairman, or Ninth National Assembly members to eat award ceremony taking place at the Banquet Hall, Presidential Villa, Abuja, date Friday, May 10, 2019, Time. 11 a.m. Keynote address by President Commander in Chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, President Muhammad Buhari, JCFR. Welcome and dressed by His Excellency Rochas Okorocha, Chairman Progressive Governors Forum. Goodwill message by His Excellency Comrade Adams Oshiomale, National Chairman APC. Highlight of the event is the presentation of an award to President Muhammadu Buhari, GCFR. Hosts, Progressive Governors, all members of the National Caucus of APC, serving and newly elected APC members of the National Assembly, should be at the party secretariat by 10.45 a.m. for a bus ride to the venue of the ceremony. Attendance is strictly by invitation. The National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, hereby notifies the general public that consequent upon the issuance and public presentation of the Nigeria Data Protection Regulation on the 25th of January 2019, full implementation of the regulation commenced on the 25th of April 2019. The regulation seeks to safeguard the rights of Nigerians to data privacy. According to Section 6C of the NIDA Act of 2007, the agency is mandated to develop regulations for electronic governance and monitor the use of electronic data interchange and other forms of electronic communication transactions. The penalty for breaching this regulation include payment of the fine of up to 2% of annual gross revenue of the preceding year or the sum of 10 million naira, whichever is greater. This is in addition to any other liabilities prescribed by law. NIDA notes with pleasure the interest, imputes, and efforts of many stakeholders in complying with the regulation and the desire to explore the economic and job creation potential that the regulation presents. We urge all Nigerians to support this initiative as your right to privacy is fundamental. For comprehensive information on the Nigeria Data Protection Regulation, please visit our website on www.nida.gov.ng. Signed, Management. The Registrar, Dr. David Buba Danjuma, on behalf of the Government Council, the Academic Board, Management, Staff, and Students of the Federal Polytechnic, IDA, warmly invite the graduates of 2016-2017 and 2017-2017 18 academic session and the public to the 24th combined convocation ceremony for the award of national diplomas, higher national diplomas, fellowship and prizes of the Polytechnic scheduled to hold as follows. Date, Saturday, 11th May 2019. Venue, New Convocation Pavilion. Time, 10 a.m. Malam Abdukadri Abba, Registrar, Announcer. The management of the Nigeria Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria cordially invites the general public to the 14th edition of the annual Ramadan lecture, which will, inshallah, hold on Saturday, 18th May 2019. The topic is tolerance in Islam to be delivered by Sheikh Mohammed Nuruddin Lemu, Director of Research and Training, the Awa Institute of Nigeria Islamic Education Trust, Mina Niger State. The venue for the event is Lumana Multipurpose Hall, River Road. 
Jabi Road East, Ngori Mijari, Kaduna by 9 a.m. Under the distinguished chairmanship of Lamido Adamawa, His Royal Highness Muhammad Barkindo Aliyu Mustafa, the Chief Host is His Excellency Mal Nasr Ahmed Er Rufai, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State. Royal Father of the Day is His Royal Highness Al Haji Dr. Show Idris, CFR, Emir of Zezo, the host uh, Malin Yakubin Muhammad, Director General of Nigeria Television Authority, Malin Mansur Liman, Director General of Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, and Dr. Osta Okechuku, Director General of Voice of Nigeria, announced organizing committee. You are welcome. <laughs> of the Trophy Five Aside Tournament coming up on the 11th of May 2019 at the Campus Mini Stadium in Lagos Island. Over 3,000 fans across the country will have a chance to win a raffle ticket for an all expense paid trip to Tanzania to be won by four lucky winners. Catch it all live on NCA Network, Quesay TV on UHF 32 and Channel 290 on your Quesay decoder. You can also download the Quesay iFlix on your mobile devices to stream live and get every bit of the action. Trophy Five Aside Field of Honor brought to you by Quesay Free Sport the official broadcast partners. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening, and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below, in the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. Thanks for staying with us. The Senate has confirmed the nomination of Abike Dabri Erewa for appointment as Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. National Assembly Correspondent Ignatius Nkwo reports. On Wednesday, 21st of November 2018, Senate considered the request of the President for the confirmation of Abike Dabri Erewa as Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission. On that same day, Senate referred the nomination to its Committee on Diaspora and Non-Governmental Organizations for screening. The committee concluded its assignment and presented the report at Thursday's plenary. Having screened and after a careful scrutiny of the curriculum vitae and other accompanying documents of the nominee, she is therefore suitable and qualified for the position. I'm not sure I've heard anything about the membership of the committee. Or is she going to be a sole administrator? For now, that is what we are giving. I suppose that the full uh, membership would come later. Unanimously, the legislators described the appointment as a round peg in a round hole. I think she has done credibly well in discharging her duty given to her by the president of this great country of ours. And um, the level of questions and the responses uh, made by, uh, by Honorable Abike Dabiri were on point. And we share a successful tenor and a great ambassador for the country. Abike Dabiri Rewa sponsored the Nigerian in Diaspora Commission Establishment Bill when she was in the House of Representatives. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari has written Senate requesting the confirmation of Godwin Emiafele for reappointment as the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. In view of the expiration of the first tenure of the current governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria on June 2, 2019. The Senate had on Tuesday, 30th of April 2019, directed its Committee on Youth and Sports to investigate alleged illegal appointment of the new Director General of the National Youth Service Corps, Brigadier General Shaibu Ibrahim, by the Chief of Army Staff. The committee also concluded its investigation, during which it discovered that the appointment followed due process. The Federal Capital Territory Hospital Management Board Establishment Bill has been passed by the Senate. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTNs. And staying in the legislature, the House of Representatives says 
All ministries, departments, and agencies of government found to have violated the Treasury's single account policy of the present administration should be sanctioned accordingly. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that this formed part of adopted recommendations by the House as contained in the report of an ad hoc committee set up to ascertain the proceeds of the TSA for enhanced transparency and accountability. In adopting the recommendations, the House urged the Ministry of Finance, Office of the Accountant General of the Federation and the Central Bank of Nigeria to enforce full implementation and compliance of the TSA policy, stressing the need for a legislation to strengthen it in all aspects. Over 2.9 trillion has occurred to the federal government uh, treasury single account within six months of operation. This led Nigerians to ask many questions, mainly bordering on the availability of funds to implement the federal, uh, federal budget and why borrowing continues. The lawmakers added that transactions outside the TSE policy, such as manual payments mandate to CBN and transfer of large funds to transit or deposit money banks accounts, are some of the methods discovered in use to circumvent the policy and should therefore be suspended. Other reports considered and adopted as the Committee of the Whole are those from Committee on Tertiary Education and Services on a bill to amend the University of Nigeria Act and another to establish Federal University Birning Kebi. Meanwhile, the House at Thursday's plenary passed for second reading a bill to establish Federal College of Education Kirikasam Majiga State, sponsored by Representative Hassan Fulata. The essence of this bill is to create an institution that will conduct serious research into agricultural production and preservation of agricultural products. The lawmakers also passed seven bills, including a bill to establish Abuja Geographic Information System Agency, a bill to establish Federal Polytechnic ITEM Abia State, a bill to establish Federal University of Agriculture at Nkowa Gombe, and a bill to establish Federal College of Education Mungunu Burnu State. A report on the issuance of funds from the Statutory Revenue Fund to the Nigeria Communications Commission and that of the Conference Committee to establish Hospitals Management Board for the FCT were laid before the House from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NC News. Business now and Minister of Budget and National Planning inaugurates new governing board members for the National Bureau of Statistics with a charge for adequate service delivery. Chimobi Walter Naji joins us on Business News. Chimobi, no doubt this will spoil the NBS for better data mining, right? Definitely, Cyril. Of course, uh, since the MBS uh, started rolling out uh, most of their data, you can see that there's been uh, a quantum development uh, in the areas of uh, data for Nigeria. Right. And uh, the precise data being turned out by the National Bureau of Statistics, which has facilitated sectoral development in updating and monitoring Nigeria's socioeconomic indicators, has been strengthened following the inauguration of the governing board of the agency. Minister of Budget and National Planning, Udoma Udo Udoma, whose ministry supervises the NBS, stressed that it has become imperative to complement the Bureau's effort to achieving sustainable and cost-effective activities. The minister implored the new board members to closely work with the management of the NBS. Able to ensure that we keep on improving on the work of the NBS. So let me congratulate all of you once more for this appointment uh, on our strong support uh, for the work of the NBS. We've always given strong support. Uh, you're coming on board. I give you that much. I'm even stronger support. Chairman of the board, Dr. Kabiru Nakora, pledged readiness of the members to honorably discharge their duties as expected to fif the 15 members governing board comprises six political appointees and nine institutional members, while the statistician general of the federation, Dr. Yemi Khali, will serve as secretary. And the federal government says it has in the last four years targeted its investment policies to its building a 
robust competitive economy, giving priority to industrialization and job creation. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment of Kechuku Enelama at an interface with the media said 13 major reforms were achieved during the period under review. If you look at every country that has succeeded, you will find that like they focused on creating the right environment for people to operate in. Because for your industry to be competitive, they need to have infrastructure. And since we cannot create a whole infrastructure for the entire country in one, in one swoop, what we are doing, which is what we learned from markets or countries like China and other countries that have industrialized rapidly, is to identify centers where we can provide all the facilities and infrastructure that industry needs, industrial parks and more broadly called special economic zones. The reforms were achieved in five major areas, ease of doing business, industrialization, attracting investments, MSME development and fostering value chain. And those are the stories at this time. You will recall, Cyril, that uh, Nigeria's ease of doing business ranking has tremendously you know, improved in the last three to four years. All right. Yes, uh, we've been following that. And uh, for the business community, they can now breathe easier. Of course. Right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. To other news now, the Court of Appeal in Abuja has upheld the appeal of Governor Buiga Uyitala of the APC in Oshun State against the victory of Ademola Adeliki at the election petition tribunal. Olabo de Arewa reports that the appellate court's decision followed a dissenting judgment of four to one. The five-man panel of appeal court justice examined 13 issues raised by the counsel to Bego Itola on the decision of the election petition tribunal. In the legal judgment, the court held that Adeliki failed to prove allegations of overvoting in 17 polling units during the said election. The appellate court asserted that the tribunal erred in amending Adeliki's petition and voiding some votes before declaring Adeliki as the winner. The court also held that the absence of Justice Peter Biora during the tribunal's proceedings on the 6th of February 2019 and his consequent participation in reviewing and reading of the judgment voided the tribunal's judgment. The court consequently dismissed the objections of Ademola Adeleke and the PDP to the appeal. We are happy that today the minority judgment of the trial tribunal has become the majority judgment of the Court of Appeal. And uh, we believe that uh, this is another new dawn in a democratic journey. We still have the right of appeal to the Supreme Court, which is the highest court of the land. We are not satisfied with the majority judgment as delivered, and we are exercising our right of appeal to the Supreme Court for the final determination of this issue of uh, associate governorship election as said in 2018. While Justice Jumai Sanki delivered the lead judgment, Justice George Mbaba delivered a dissenting judgment on the case. Meanwhile, there was jubilation on the streets of Oshubo following the judgment. <laughs> The federal government has resuscitated the Moribund Metallurgical Development Center in Jos, Plateau State, signaling Nigeria's self-sufficiency in steel production. Minister of State, Mines and Steel Development, Abu Bakar Bawabwari, who inaugurated some projects at the center, was full of praises for President Buhari for reviving the steel industry in the country. Mia Ugidi reports. Been off for years, the flames are back on the furnaces. Machines in the workshops also rolling in full scale as the Minister of Mines and Steel Development provides all what is needed to make the center a destination of choice for researchers, beneficiation and other services in the metallurgical industry. Contract was awarded in December 2018 and less than five months the minister is here cutting tapes the main event of the day. This newly built and furnished microwaves plasma atomic emission spectrometer and analytical equipment will help Nigeria in testing all our solid mineral resources instead of going outside Nigeria. A befitting conference hall, 500 kVA generating set, internet facilities, street lights, e-lux vehicles, internal roads, among others, where some of the projects and more are still ongoing.
Uh, what uh, we are trying to focus on now is value addition. We don't want our minerals just to be carried out like that and uh, without adding value. What has been happening in the past is that you take one mineral, for example, copper. At the end of the day, when the beneficiation has taken, has taken place somewhere outside Nigeria, you find there is silver, there is gold. And uh, that's exactly what you've seen here. They are able to separate from a mineral all other associated Minerals. This really motivated the staff. But for the Minister of Mines and Steel Development, increased productivity is his expectation with commensurate increase in GDP growth. Mayor Ogidi, NT News. With the rains, the need to sensitize the public to the disasters associated with the season becomes paramount. This is why the National Early Warning and Response Mechanism Center has reeled out the 2019 flood and rainfall outlook in a bid to create and strategize measures to reduce the adverse effects of flood disasters. Daniel Adiri tells us more. Major natural disaster, but if not well planned for, its adverse effects leave lasting scars. This is why the National Early Response and Mechanism Center, in a press briefing in Abuja, released the flood data outlook for 2019 and the measures it is putting in place to cushion the effects of possible disasters associated with it. The National Executive Council, in its meeting of July 16, 2018, approved the inauguration of a technical committee on flooding that will fashion out strategic measures to mitigate flooding in Nigeria. The severely affected states will be addressed using the existing flood vulnerability map of the, of the Federal Ministry of Environment. Speaking further, the chairman reiterated the resolute commitment of government to ensure that Nigeria's flood risk level is reduced to the barest minimum. Come from 2019, we are going to break the circle of flood disaster in the Federal Republic. He also called for continuous synergy of all relevant agencies involved in risk management to step up awareness among the public. In Abuja, Daniel Adirie, NT News. The Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngigi, says he does not have anything personal against Frank Kukuri, but maintains that he did not and will not recommend him for appointment as chairman of the governing board of the Nigeria Social Insurance Trust Fund. Into the picketing of his private residence by labor leaders in the early hours of Wednesday over the Kokuri matter, which he described as unfortunate. By law, to do that recommendation. And I'm telling you, on a provocally that I did not recommend him till I'm following the law of the land. I cannot put a, a labor colored person there. I can't recommend a labor colored person. I did not recommend. I'm not foolish to do so. And if I'm not foolish to do so, NSC should not and twist me, blackmail me into a submission. What we are doing now is that we have proposed and the government has approved a fit and neutral person, a fit and proper person who is neutral, not a government officer, not a labor colored man, and not a, a private sector man. Miss Ama Pepo is a neutral person, but has a cognate experience and background. The minister said consultations are ongoing towards fixing a new date for the inauguration of the NSITF board. Let's go to Lagos now as we link up with Hingino John Adams to take us through some stories. Hingino. Thank you, Cyril, and welcome to Lagos. As part of efforts to revitalize reading culture among Nigerians and promote the ease of doing business in the publishing sector, the National Library has developed an accessible e-strategy. The National Librarian Professor Lenry Aino at a media briefing in Lagos explained that the app will reduce hours of getting the international standard serial number by publishers. Ritimi Oluagbemi has details. Developed by staff of the National Library of Nigeria 
the online application will make it easier for book publishers, authors, and organizations to apply for and obtain international standard serial number for their publication within 24 hours. With the app, publishers will also be able to search for the availability of titles they intend to use for their journals. Similarly, authors or publishers in the need of international standard book number can also log in and submit evidence of the books for which standard numbers is being sought for and then go ahead to make payment after we receive the number via the registered email. Professor, I now also encourage Nigerians to cultivate the habit of voluntary reading in Lagos, Rotimulagbemi, NT News. Building a credible Navy capable of discharging its constitutional and statutory duties, the Navy says requires rejuvenating the tenets of professionalism among naval personnel at all levels. This was the consensus at the second Nigerian Navy Warrant Officers Convention in Lagos. Lynn Leneke reports that the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ibok Ekwe Ibas, was represented. The Nigerian Navy has developed a potent force capable of tackling maritime challenges in the exclusive economic zone up to the Gulf of Guinea over the years. The Navy is also involved in the ongoing counterinsurgency operations, especially in the six geopolitical zones. The convention, therefore, is imperative to the operational and administrative goals of the Nigerian Navy, especially the warrant officers' CADA. They themselves are examples because the way they carry on their job, the way they do their job, the way they are prompt in executing orders that must have come from the officers is also a training point or a learning point for the junior ratings. We are all having a nation to build and everybody must be seen to be playing his or her role in that common effort towards national security and national development. The Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ibok Ekwe Ibas, who was represented, emphasized that Warrant Officers CADA, which is the bridge between the officers and ratings, is crucial and considered an essential tool for enhanced operational effectiveness. Presentation of papers on human resource management and operational efficiencies in the Nigerian Navy featured prominently at the seminar. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports after this commercial break. Please stay with us. You know from day one, gold makes life easier. They brought us past second billing unbelievable data packages. And even an optic fiber cable to make sure we optimize. There are two things in our lives we depend on the communication and information, voice and data. Whether you sell, buy, learn, teach, sell, it really comes out to those two things, voice or data. Today's world is all about you. You want what you want, how you want it, and Glow delivers. The freedom to use voice and data the way you like on every recharge. Easy. Glow Yakata, the heavyweight voice and data plan. Recharge from 100 Naira and get a minimum 500 Naira to call all networks, plus up to 6 gigabytes of data to browse, chit-chat, WhatsApp and more. Dial star 230 hash or buy your glow sim. Glow Unlimited. Darling, what's the matter? It's your birthday. Guests are already waiting at the pool. It's headache, cold, pain, all over my body. Whole time anti cold tablets, powerful ingredients specially prepared to bring you fast relief from headache, body ache, cough, flu, cold, and fever. Baby, how are you feeling now? Wow, I feel great thanks to cold time tablet. Cold time tablet also available in syrup for children. If symptoms persist after three days, consult your doctor. Cold time anti cold tablet, a quality product from Embassy Pharmaceutical and Chemicals Limited. Cold time anti cold tablet, your visa to healthy living. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. 
Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. All right, Meduguri is next now with Naomi Aboku to guide us through some reports from that zone. Naomi. Cyril, and welcome to Meduguri. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has pledged to sustain partnership with governmental and non-governmental organizations in its quest to better the living conditions of internally displaced persons and host communities in the Northeast. Director General of NEMA, Mustafa May Haja, stated this at an appraisal meeting organized for government agencies, stakeholders, and humanitarian organizations operating in the North East region. Jetwa John Jessen reports. The performance appraisal meeting drew participants from government parastatals, local, national and international non-governmental organizations and donor agencies among other stakeholders. NEMA had used the roundtable meeting to appreciate the Borno State Government, NGOs and civil society organizations for the various interventions to mitigate the insurgency situation bedeviling the North East. Mustafa May Hadja, who was represented by Director Planning Research and Forecasting NEMA, Kayode Fagwimi, says the agency seeks to gather details on various types of intervention provided by stakeholders in humanitarian service provision so as to avoid duplication. We want a situation where we, 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 we take control of where the resources go and then more people benefit. The Federal Government Emergency Agricultural Intervention Fund and NEMA set to provide 12,000 farmers in Borno with seedlings and farm inputs for the planting season. Head of Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, SEMA, Ministry of Women Affairs and other speakers highlighted on the need to extend hands of assistance in areas of food security, shelter, hygiene and prevention of sexual exploitation, presentation on progresses and challenges of sector activities to include health, nutrition, food security, wash, education and logistics also featured during the meeting. In Meduguri, Jadwa John Jason, NTA News. Federal Commissioner, National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, Sadia Umar Farouk, says the Commission will continue to scale up provision of basic needs of displaced victims of insurgency in Borno and other crisis-affected communities across the country. The Federal Commissioner made this assertion while presenting relief materials to internally displaced persons taking refuge at camps within Mangunu. Dikwa and mobile local government areas of Borno State. Abu Bakar Muhammad Musa reports. The presentation of relief materials worth millions of naira to victims of insurgency was in view of a request made to the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and IDPs by internally displaced persons camped at Mungunu, Dikwa and mobile local government areas. The National Commissioner for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, Sadia Umar Farouk, was recently in Meduguri to take stock of assorted food and non-food items worth millions of naira at the Commission's store prepared for delivery for persons of need. Presenting the food and non-food materials to the people on behalf of the National Commission, Head of IDP's Department and the Commission, Shiza Bada, said the quick intervention followed a need assessment visit on the communities. Some of the beneficiaries commended the National Security Advisor and National Commission for Refugees for the quick response to their plight. Internally displaced persons camps in Mongunu, Dikwa and Mobar, where the need assessment was conducted, are benefiting from the gesture. In Meduguri, Abu Bakr Muhammad Musa, NTA News. That's our contribution from Meduguri. Cyril is back to you in Abuja. Good evening. All right, Naomi, thanks. And uh, time for another quick break. Stay with us. <laughs> Hold on, please. Let me calm down. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Hope you've rubbed off your meter. Oh, Oga, we no longer tamper with our call dispense meter because it is cheating and corruption. I will always sell for to all customers at the correct amount because change begins with me. Nice one. How much, Oga? Fill up.
This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Rubitan Sports now in furtherance of its intervention in grassroots sports development. The National Lottery Trust Fund has handed over sports equipment to Central Pilot Primary School in New Cairo, Nasarawa State. The school is one of more than 2,550 public primary schools that have so far benefited from the gesture, which started in May 2016. Permanent Secretary Special Duties Office, Festus Daudu, handed over the allocation letter to the head teacher on behalf of Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa. He described the intervention by the National Lottery Trust Fund as the federal government solution to the gap between sports infrastructure and athletes. At the federal government level, through the National Sports Commission is providing at least 5% of its total annual budget for sports for the maintenance of sports facilities and infrastructures. In the same vein, both the states and the local governments are to provide the same 5% of their total annual budget for sports, for the maintenance of sports facilities and infrastructures. Executive Secretary, National Lottery Commission, Bill Lumegari, said the sports equipment in nine sports will give the needed opportunity to pupils to develop interest in sports and for sports administrators to catch them young. This equipment will, in our view, promote sporting excellence, not only in the school, but in the house, assuming if they use it, they can compete among schools within the community and outside the community. And we have received reports from other states like Jalingo, where they have used volleyball, for instance, to win laurels for their states. And also, this intervention has produced a world-class, world champion in 100 meters in the last Youth Olympics in Algeria. The equipment of a soccer, athletics, handball, basketball, and taekwondo. More sports reports ahead with Kene Imagbodike.